Kayla Kate here talking about one of my favorite topics, all things generations. And so if you have a baby boomer, millennial, a Gen X or a Gen Z in your life who's driving you crazy, uh, this may be a good talk for you to dive into. But two of the questions I get asked the most are, when is my baby boomer boss going to ever retire? And how can I actually work with them? And then the second on the other end of that is, how can I get my millennials in my workplace to get motivated, come to work, um, you know, just kick them in the butt kind of thing, get them, get them some life, some energy. And so we're going to be diving into those here today. So interesting is um, back in 8th century BC, there's an ancient poet called Hesed who said, I see no hope for the future of our people if they're depending on the frivolous youth of today. And so we can take some reassurance to know that there's never been a generation that has said, oh no, these kids these days. Way back in eighth century, Hesed started it and said, oh no, there's no hope for our future. And so you can look at the Gen Zers or millennials or whoever it might be and think, oh no, you know, we've survived this long with all these generations, um, you know, we'll, we'll be okay. But um, as we're breaking down the generations, the first we have is the builders and tra traditionalists, and they were born out of the Depression era. And so there is where we get uh, the respect, the kind of military mindset, and where you see a lot of um, leadership and kind of the, the upper management, a lot of times you see that kind of military leadership because it was, you know, post when they came back from war and stepped into the workplace, uh, there was that just took that leadership straight into the workplace. And we're seeing now such a shift in how, um, you know, that traditional um, kind of just down the line leadership is now shifting a bit more um, in, in these other generations. So that's your kind of builder generation. Uh, below that, we have the baby boomers. And the baby boomers are, um, they live to work. It's, a, it's why they can't, um, they can't retire. And so my mom's a good example of this. She's been, you know, retiring for year upon year, and she finally did it this year. Um, but even then, you know, she's already signed up to start subbing. Um, and it's, it's kind of just who that generation is. Um, they kind of, they are what they do. It's that they live to work. It's that's, that's their motto. And so, um, for all you younger generations, they might, might be a while before they retire. So just hang on. Um, below them, we have the Gen Xers and then you start to kind of see a shift and they have more of a work-life balance. And so I'll just use my family again. My brother's a good example of this. He always says, we work hard, we play hard. And that's a great motto for this generation. They work hard, they play hard, but they like that kind of work-life balance. So then we shift down the line and we have the millennials. And now we have a full kind of pendulum swing and they are work to live. So first we are live to work, then it's work-life balance. And now we have the millennials who you know, work to live. They want the experience. They, they want a job they can get passionate about and sink their teeth into. And so there's a lot we could say about how to motivate them, which would be around things that ignite them and, and give them passion and give them drive. And they love coaches and they love mentors um, and that kind of thing. So then just really briefly, Gen Z um, is very social media focused, obviously. And there's, I'm not going to go into it too much, but I've heard the motto for them is they are their likes. And so that seems, seems relative and, and appropriate. But three things that make up every generation are your parents, politics, and pop culture. And so I kind of have a love hate with, with generational training and talks is, and it's because it so quickly can put someone in a box as we're going through these three areas that shape and influence somebody in their kind of formative years. You know, they say the most formative years of someone is, is between the ages uh, young up to ages eight to 12, because you're forming thoughts about who you are, your perception about yourself, how you see the world, how you see people around you. And so if you think about that, somebody really does become a product of their environment. 
And why I, I kind of say be careful to just put people in the millennial box or the baby boomer box is one is you don't know who their parental influence were when they were young. Uh, and that is a key role in shaping who they become, their values. They might have been raised by their grandparents. Uh, just a lot of different things that maybe have shaped them in a different way. And then obviously politics um, is a big one that shapes someone. You know, everybody remembers, um, you know, JFK, where they were when, when that happened and how that, you know, shaped them and their, their thinking around Society at that time, the same with when the World Trade Center, um, you know, when that happened and all of, all of those things are very, you know, impactful on, you know, the upbringing of, of a young person as well as pop culture. And so this one becomes really interesting as well in the younger generations when we see them um, potentially more influenced by pop culture because of the influence of social media and so when I kind of, in, in that quick, really rundown of the generations, one thing that's important to think about is seek first to understand who you're trying to work with and what their key influencers might be and what really values has sh helped shape how they're thinking. Are they live to work? Are they work-life balance? Do they... Um, you know, love their, their social media, whatever it might be. And so seek first to understand the product um, of kind of the environment they were growing up in, um, but also um, just, yeah, the wider context of what you're dealing with in the situation. So there's a lot more I could dive into and maybe I'll take time to dive into each one on a separate video, but let me know if you have more specific questions, but it's a fun topic to, to dig into and even to learn more about yourself and to think about your key influencers, your parents, your politics, your pop culture, and how that shaped and form, formed you in those kind of most formative years of your life as well. And so until next time.